when we think about this world right now, the world we're living in, y'all, unprecedented pandemic. Mm -hmm. You have the literally the the world's on fire. It's just getting hotter and hotter. It's going to burn more and more and more. Yep. So air quality is going to go, you know, it's just, then you look at political instability, like look, look what just happened in Afghanistan. Look, and then look at natural disasters like Haiti. Look, the, 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 there is a lot of uncertainty and problems happening in this world and no one's coming to save you. Mm-hmm. No one's coming to save us. We have to be self-sovereign. We have to build our own tech. We have to own our own platforms. We got to stop letting other people, we got to stop supporting other platforms that aren't owned by us. We keep making these, these, these tech platforms, billion dollar platforms like Clubhouse, Twitter, you name it, Cash App, all of, the, all of these other platforms not owned by us. We make them billionaire, multi-billion dollar companies when we have the power to do it ourselves. And we have the technology that exists to do it. That's why I love what you brothers are building with EYL. You're building something that is self-sovereign. And that's the future to me, y'all. That's the future. And so, yes, we need to be extremely diligent and smart with our investing and use of capital. But we also have to start building our own infrastructure and supporting each other down the line. And that's the real leverage. That's the real power. And that's way when the rest of the world is burning, we going to be all right. To me, that's it. Yeah. And I'll say this really quick. Collaboration is the only way to build that infrastructure, because if we don't have enough people Absolutely. Driving, Absolutely. driving enough revenue, we won't. Like I've never said this publicly, but these next fifteen years are going to be the era of the investor. Like every CEO that I talk to, or every president of any mildly major company, they are trying to do whatever they can with AI to eliminate damn near every job on earth that they can. And I'm not saying that to be salacious, like. Everyone is like, how can we cut our workforce by 60% but drive revenue 900%? I mean, they're top conversation. There's six Amazon Go stores here in Seattle, and and, and they're testing them here. (laughs) You know what they are? You literally walk into the store, you fill up whatever you want, and you walk out, and you don't. There's nobody there to check you out. There's no one, you just get automatically charged, right? So the future of even shopping. They're getting rid of every single service job they can. He's absolutely right. There's no question about that. Yeah, Amazon Go is something that we covered on the podcast over a year ago. If anybody's not familiar, it's um, it's like a grocery store with um, no cashiers. But even bigger than that, it's, it's a lot of AI that's built in. Um, and you go in there and you, uh, you get what you want and then you kind of just leave the store. You don't even like ring it up. Like a lot of grocery stores have like the thing where you just ring it up. You don't even ring it up. You just literally just walk out and then it just scans. Um, so I see a world even more advanced than that where, you know, they can actually re- read your thoughts or know your shopping patterns. Um, and you don't even necessarily have to even look for something. Like as soon as you walk in, they already have what you want kind of like waiting for you. So when we when we look at these things, the technology that we speak about, um, it may sound like we're fantasizing, but it's something that's very real. And, um, you know, all of these things that we've been speaking about for a long time with the Oculus and um, all of these different technologies. Metaverse and yeah, virtual reality. Yeah. Um, it's coming. It's coming. It's, it's already here, but it's it's coming to fruition. And all of this plays together with the blockchain. I wanted to ask, that's my next question. Hill, um, I want to kind of, because, you know, a lot of people, we could just say all day, like, buy this crypto, buy that crypto. We can, we'll, you know, we'll say some a couple of cryptos that we like, I, at least I will. But I want to kind of give people a broader range of education because I don't think people still are really educated on it. So we talked about Satoshis, which I'm sure a lot of people don't know what Satoshis are. Um, blockchain technology. Can you try to give a, a, a easy explanation on what blockchain technology is? Because I feel like a lot of people still don't really understand what the blockchain is. Well, you know, the way I try to describe describe it is um, it's it's trustless, which means that everything is put just think about a ledger. Like if you're writing out a ledger and you're saying you have an, an exchange of goods and services for this, someone's actually writing a, a ledger. But in this case, 
Um, it's not changeable. You can't go back and erase it. You can't go back and say, oh, that, 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 that transaction or this, this exchange didn't actually happen. And its uses are, are innumerable, innumerable. Where I like to talk about to, for people to kind of wrap their heads around it is the idea that things that have been heretofore had barriers to entry like you need to get a real estate license to sell real estate with smart contracts and blockchain technology and tokenization of real estate, for instance, you can use that. For instance, if you buy, let's say I tokenize the house I'm in. No, 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 better yet. I tokenize, I'm not talking about an, an NFT or a digital artwork, but I take this physical artwork, this is Bisa Butler, amazing artist. I take this and I, and, I, and I create an X number of tokens for ownership of this artwork, or I take the Empire State Building and I tokenize that mm -hmm. and I sell those individual tokens. It, the, the way that token moves from owner to owner to owner is immutable and it's registered and it, and, and you, and it exists on the blockchain. And that's the way people need to think about it. It's just... It's basically, and the reason why it takes so much computing power um, oftentimes to register these transactions in many computers around the world. And that's why, for instance, I mine Ethereum. It, and, and so the, it takes a great deal of computational power to continue to register these transactions. And so, but it happens on a chain, then the chain cannot be broken unless it's hacked. Now, let's talk about that real quick. There was a DeFi hack this past week of the Poly Network, $600 million hack, right? So the danger is still there, right? The danger is still there, it, there you know, but the, the, most, of, most of, the, of it was returned by the hacker. The hacker just wanted to prove that they could do it and help them learn to make some changes. But the point is, is that ultimately um, the, the chain is in theory, unbreakable, and everything is registered on the chain. If folks want to think about it in terms of a chain, they want to think about it in terms of a block, they, it, it, whatever helps you mentally understand that once it's set, it's set and it moves uh, along the line of transaction. And it also um, helps things move a lot quicker. Because um, we had said before, like, you know, previously the quickest way to get a million dollars from New York to London um, was to get on a plane with a million dollars and fly from New York to London. Cause like, you know, if you, if you do a bank wire, it's going to take a few days for it to even clear um, with the blockchain. It can be done within a couple of minutes, depending on, you know, mm -hmm. which platform you use. So the speed of execution, I think is extremely important. And then, like you said, also the record of it. So this is extremely important for, you know, not to be um, forgerized or plagiarized. Um, mm -hmm. That goes back to the NFT conversation. So all of these things, it's like pieces of puzzle. They all kind of come together. So now, you know, if you study art, like, you know, I watch all these shows like 60 Minutes and um, in the high-end art world, um, plagiarism is a huge thing. There's like hundreds of millions of dollars that's lost every year from people that buy yes. paintings. And these paintings are like half a million dollars, $2 million. And they're like very, very detailed, but there's like, whole people like factories that make fake paintings so some of the the, the best um houses have been scammed because they they thought that it was real and like Sotheby's and all of these places so art the art world has been taking a hit for a while with plagiarism and and fake work but now this is what the nft comes into play um with the blockchain you have a record for it and unless you said like it's hacked it's it's almost impossible for that plagiarism to be as rampant as it was previously. So, and then with medical records also, medical records is a big, is a big deal. Um, I think that that's something that the blockchain technology can really help out with as far as the medical records, A, sending medical records, because I used to work in the insurance industry and it would be so crazy. We used to ask for APS. So APS is an attending physician statement. So somebody wants to get life insurance, right? And they might've had, you know, a heart attack or whatever. So now the insurance company has to contact the doctor for the APS. I've seen APSs take anywhere from a week to yeah, nine months, nine months. 
I've, I've waited on APSs for nine months because we call in the doctor's office and the secretary got an attitude. The doctor went on. They still keep records on file. I've seen it happen. And in that nine months, somebody can die, right? Because the, the insurance company is not going to give you the insurance until everything is up to date and they make sure that they're going to, you know, do their due diligence. So now with the blockchain, instead of waiting, look how outdated that is. Like literally, like we call and I have to like have somebody at the insurance company call and wait on the phone for an hour. Now they can just send it within minutes. They have all of the, the client's records, whatever they need to be sent can be sent on the blockchain and it's no um, corruption that can be done with it. And the insurance company gets it and now they can make a decision within a day as opposed to having a client wait for a year. So the blockchain technology is something that's been around for a while and it's not going anywhere. And every company and every institution, every way of business is going to um, adopt blockchain technology because cryptocurrency cannot live without blockchain, but the blockchain can live without cryptocurrency. So absolutely. It's just, I mean, the easiest way to say it, it's a way of recording information. And once it's recorded, it can't be changed. It's distributed over many computers and systems. And, and it's a very powerful tool when you apply it uh, uh, across a whole universe of, of uses. Uh, but obviously crypto right now is, 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 is the leader in that, in that space. My graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>